knowledge management plans, one of the most significant developments in knowledge management in the past 12 years. In this podcast, Tom Young of NoCo.com talks with Paul Whiffin, a knowledge manager of 12 years experience, and discusses the value and the impact of knowledge management plans. A transcript of this conversation is available from the download section of the NoCo website, www.noco.com. Paul, could you share with us, you've been a a knowledge manager for 12 years, I think it is now, Um, could you share with us um, what you see as the significant developments over that period? So really one of developments sticks out, it's kind of writ large in that 12 years, um, and occurred uh, roughly in the middle of, of that period, and it's been so significant I've wondered how I managed to really implement knowledge management before that. That development is the knowledge management plan. The knowledge management plan brings, I think the key word here is focus. Otherwise, um, if you don't have that focus in support of the business need or the business direction, you end up saying, okay, we know that these, these tactical processes of learning before, during, and after, and communities are very good, but they, they tend to be done in a very sort of reactive, activity-led way. It's not as effective as having that focus. So the focus says, okay, which knowledge do we need to prioritize in support of the business? So the knowledge plan... Uh, if you like, uh, that plan works very well is to say, okay, at the top of a knowledge plan, what are you as a business trying to achieve? You know, what is your strategic knowledge? What is your competitive knowledge? What is your core knowledge? What is your non-core knowledge? Now, all those four terms mean something specific, and I, I must say that the turning point for me came when I saw Nick Milton's paper uh, on this. Basically, it's saying that we know that the business um, has got core business areas, it's got strategic business areas where it's looking over the horizon, looking at the merging knowledge. But, you know, it, it re- it's proactively addressing the needs of the business um, looking over the horizon. So it, it, it enables a means to say, okay, uh, looking over the horizon, what's our long-term look ahead for, for knowledge management, our, for, if you like, our innovation? Uh, what's our competitive knowledge needs where we need to put in place and, and consciously uh, uh, learn and update our existing uh, best practices? What's our core knowledge needs, i.e. the things that we've been doing for many years that haven't changed very much and nor are they likely to, but actually we need to protect and manage or even guard them if you like so that we don't take our eye off the ball and forget how to do the basics. And once you've got it clear, which is your strategic, competitive, core and non-core knowledge areas, you can then start to target and, and prioritize your tactical learning processes in support of them. I think another key area of the knowledge plan uh, that I've found is absolutely critical is the 12-element model. And the 12-element model uh, answers a different question. If the knowledge competency framework answers the question, which knowledge, the 12-element model answers the question, how do we know as a business uh, where the gaps are in our knowledge flow? It's like a diagnosis, if you like, Um, because often I've found in in, uh, businesses, uh, people are frustrated. They know that knowledge isn't flowing as smoothly and as effectively as it should be. Uh, If you like, the the flow from knowledge customers, sorry, from knowledge suppliers to knowledge customers isn't as obvious. It just isn't happening as, as it should be. The 12 element model gives a means to people to say, okay, if we've got these 12 elements in, in place from, uh, through communicating, capturing, organizing, and accessing knowledge in this certain structured way, we can see that that's a framework that makes sense. If those 12 elements are in place, we know that knowledge is flowing and we are learning. Now, of course, if any of those elements are missing, and in my experience, it only takes one or two of them to be missing, or, or not very strong before the learning organization, the knowledge flow isn't taking place. So it, you can use the 12 element model as another two by two Boston Square on a flip chart to talk to a business, to talk to people uh, in, in a business and say, look, which of these elements are in place? You, you can talk about you know, putting green lights beside each of them or red lights if they're missing or an amber light if it's kind of partly there. And uh, it, it's a very powerful means to get 
to give shape to a learning framework so people can get their arms around it and say, okay, now we, we can see a systematic approach here that makes sense. Where are the gaps? You know, where are the gaps that we together need to, uh, need to put in place?